No matter whatever your political stripe is, no matter, no matter your religious system, your belief system, no matter your mindset or your worldview, everyone will agree on this. Things aren't like they ought to be. And we all disagree about how we can get to where they need to be and what needs to change, but we all agree that things aren't as they ought to be. That life is a struggle. That the path feels hard. That it seems like life is just one thing after another. How many of you have said that, right? We can't catch a break. It's just one thing after another. It seems like things go from bad to worse to worst. Right? I, I, I'm, I'm guilty of saying this is the worst and then proving myself wrong because then later it's like, no, this is the worst. And the truth is that, that God has ordained that things not be perfect, at least not in this setting, because the nature of this life causes us to look upward. The fact that we look around and everything is broken, the fact that we look around and life is always a struggle, it's toil, it's difficulty, it forces us to look upward. And this is not an accident. Ecclesiastes 3.11 tells us that God has set eternity in our hearts, that there is this kind of this gaping hole that cannot be filled with anything that is temporal. It can only be filled with things that are eternal, that we will spend our whole lives trying to search out what it is that God is doing, and it won't make sense to us. Paul told the Romans, he says, all of creation groans. The whole world groans looking for the appearing, the redemption. And not only they, but ourselves also. We groan in our spirit, longing for redemption, longing for rescue, longing for restoration. There is a cry deep within our hearts and souls that only God can meet. Only he can reach out to. And the world is built that way because without it, without the toil, without the struggle, we wouldn't recognize our need for God. And we don't like to hear that because it's painful. And we're all familiar with pain, right? I mean, since the time that we were children, we figured out that things hurt. That when we fall, we stub our toe, We put our hand on something hot, that that hurts. And we don't like pain, but pain is a gift. Because pain helps us see that something is harmful. I know that we would all like for God to remove the struggle, for Him to remove the pain, for Him to remove the grief. But without the struggle, we would not realize our need for God. How many of you, you met God right in the midst of your struggle, right in the midst of your heartache, right in the middle of your pain, that is where God came close, or you opened your heart to Him, and you experienced God's work in your life. And if it wasn't for that pain, if it wasn't for that struggle, if it wasn't for that hardship, you would have never recognized your need for God. 